Okay. I'm back with you, folks. And I don't know if uh, he's out there still. Uh, I think, I don't know if Tammy's probably still. My daughter in Panama City is probably still watching because uh, she's at a, uh, at a laundromat doing, doing clothes. Praise God. Praise God. I'm tagging some people right now. Praise God. Praise God. I'm looking at people's names here to tag. Uh, praise God. I'm looking at people's names here to tag. If you're still hearing me or seeing me, that's what I'm doing. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Well, I think that's about all. Still with me, folks? Okay. Okay. Let me see. Rhonda's watching. She's back. Praise God. I got that way by time, Rhonda. And there's my daughter watching. Stacy's watching. Good. Praise God. Um, Colin's watching. Said Tammy says she misses me. I miss it. Miss you and goes around. Now. Stacy said, I'm watching. God bless you, Stacy. Colin, God bless you. I love you too, buddy. <clears throat> and Jimmy's watching. Are you in the hospital, Jimmy? Sue called me and said, you're going to use in the hospital, but I don't know if he's, if he kept you or you're going to, going to let you out. To, if they let you out today or tomorrow, T Jimmy had a uh, operation on his heart. And I didn't know it till Sue. I knew it was coming up, but I didn't know that it had happened already. And, uh, yeah, jo Ronald, Josh will reply to you, but he's not, he's not letting me know he's on yet that I know of. He may be at his church. They have church on Thursday nights and it starts at seven. So he may be at the church. Praise God. But anyway, Jimmy, God bless you. And, uh, I've been praying for you about your heart and I'm glad she told me everything turned out good. And I'll be glad when you can come home and get well and get back to normal. Praise God. Well, folks, God bless you. <clears throat> yeah, he's on now. Praise God. Josh, Joshua, uh, Rhonda said to tell you, said, oh, to you, Mike, can, you might can see it, I guess. Still new to this stuff. Eva, God bless you. And I'm glad you're watching tonight. Uh, and uh, I, I was thinking about it today. I wondered if people, oh, okay, you're at home. Okay. I wondered if people, send a text to the one that's on here live if if the other people can see the text so evidently you can praise god <clears throat> so anyway oh i'm sure he's needed to part for his computer and uh, they sent him the wrong part that's a shame praise god but god will get you the right part praise god anyway folks uh, if you're there and uh, and uh, you want to stay with me a little bit let's uh Let's pray. Can we pray? Lord, uh, I pray right now that this will be your time, Father. That this will be your your time on the air, your broadcast, we call it, or whatever it is, live um, on Facebook. This will be your time. And that when it's all over with, 
from start to finish will be yours and when it's all over with, that your will will have been done, that you will have touched people who are uh, uh, in need tonight, Father. There's several needs, I'm sure, of people, and I pray you touch them, Father. Meet the needs. Praise God. Praise God. Meet their needs, Father of the people, and just take control of this broadcast. Let it be yours, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, folks, I want to go ahead and get started in my message. And uh, I haven't seen Joe or Peggy on, so I don't know if they forgot about it or if something's come up and they couldn't, uh, they couldn't, uh, didn't remember, remember it. Praise God. But anyway, uh, I want to start tonight with a scripture from chapter 1 of Luke. Uh, praise God. Chapter 1 of Luke, verse 37. And it says, there he is. There's Joe. Glad to have you, Joe. Hope Peggy's watching too. Praise God. Luke chapter 1, verse 37. This is my scripture to start off with tonight. And it says, for with God... Nothing shall be impossible. Praise God. I want you to think about that for a moment, folks. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. And uh, before I go off tonight, folks, when I'm done with my message, I want to share something with you real quick so you all stay with me the ones that can, okay? Praise God. Praise God. So uh, stay with me after the I've got something I want to share with you, if you don't mind, the ones that would be interested in it, especially people. Well, I don't know who would be interested in what i got to say, but just wait till the broadcast over and I'll tell you. From Luke chapter 1, verse 37 says, For with God nothing shall be impossible. I want to talk to you about nothing being impossible with God. I feel that this message is from the Lord. I have felt impressed by the Lord to share this message with you tonight. It gave me a strong indication or he impressed it on me. I've been wondering what to talk about and, and he impressed this on me today. And I feel like he wants me to share it with you. Why? Because I believe we're going, we're going to need to know these things I'm going to share tonight for our future as Christians, especially. I hope you will stay with me through the entire message, if you can. I strongly believe that we need to hear this message tonight and receive the word that God the word tells us that nothing is impossible. God bless you. Thank you. Praise God. God bless you, Kathy. Well, God bless you, Aaron. Long time no see, girl. This is a lady that uh, came to our church back in the 70s and was part of a, she played the guitar and was part of the music there and, and was a blessing. Praise God. Long time. Praise the Lord. Since I've seen you, Aaron, God bless you. And your family, praise God. I believe that we need to hear and receive God's word that lets us know there's nothing impossible with him. I believe, folks, that there's some trials coming to the Christians and to the world and to Christians in the future like we've never experienced before, much like what we're going through right now. I believe that we, as we approach the time of the tribulation, that things are going to begin to happen to prepare the world to receive the Antichrist. Praise God. Let me get a drink, folks. Praise God. I look at the tribulation period that's quickly approaching. Martha, God bless you. I hope you can stay with me. Just got started. <clears throat> good to see you. Good to see you're listening tonight. God bless you. Hope you and your family are good. Martha was a lady that uh, was my wife Maria's boss at Hardy's. 
and um, they were very good friends, her and my to be real good friends. When I look at the tribulation that's coming on the earth, I see it as a horrific seven years of judgment, a storm, like a horrific storm, seven years of judgment from God. And as it happens, Elizabeth, God bless you. Glad you're watching. As it happens many times before a main storm hits, <clears throat> excuse me, you see that a lot of times a, 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 main, a, a major storm will be preceded by strong winds and damaging, uh, damaging winds. And uh, then the main storm hits. And I believe that's what's going to happen for the, uh, God bless you, Elizabeth. Good evening to you, too. I, I believe that uh, before the tribulation hits, and it's time for the tribulation, that there's going to be some strong winds. And before we get out of here, it's going to be rough. That's my personal opinion. I want you to know right from the start that I believe the Bible teaches that God is going to remove his people from the before it happens. And but I also believe that the world is going to go through some a time of what I call a time of conditioning before the tribulation hits to prepare the world to receive the Antichrist, the beast, the Bible calls it. And I believe that conditioning of the world is already started. <clears throat> I believe that the preparing and conditioning of the world has already begun. And I believe that's the part that's going to be difficult for Christians, for us as Christians. What the world is going to go through in order Prepare it for the Antichrist, the false prophet, and the tribulation period. I do believe that Jesus will come first before the tribulation starts and take his people out of here. But I believe before that happens, it's very possible that some strong winds, <coughs> that some strong winds are going to precede the tribulation and that as Christians, those strong winds are going to be challenging for us, going to challenge us as Christians. And that's why we as Christians need to know no matter what we have to face, God is able and will see us through it. I believe that no matter what we go through, Jonah, God bless you. Glad to have you here. I believe that no matter what we have to go through, that God's going to see us through it. But I do believe it's very possible. Thank you, Jonah. I do believe it's very possible that we're going to go through some rather severe things as Christians before we get out of this world. Praise God. And that's why I believe it's crucial essential for our faith to be strong. That's one of my major points tonight. I, I believe it's going to, it's very, it's crucial, it's essential that our faith, Christian faith, our faith in God, our faith in His Word be strong. So that when those times begin to come in preparing the world, conditioning the world for the tribulation period in the Antichrist, if our faith is strong, we'll be able to overcome all that comes our way. And I believe that the scripture tells us that we can stand. We can be strong enough, but we have to we have to have a faith. And I'll share that with you in just a moment why I say that. We have to have a strong faith. Ephesians chapter six, verse thirteen. Ephesians chapter six, verse thirteen says Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, 
and having done all to stand. That word evil there means the day that the enemy tries to destroy us, the day that he comes against us. <coughs> Excuse me, folks. I'll tell you, as I was telling somebody earlier on here, uh, I didn't have a cough all day <laughs> till I got ready to do my broadcast. And now I've started coughing and feeling that junk. You know how you feel that junk in time of allergies in your throat? Praise God. Just pray for me and I'll get through it. Praise God. We need to hear, receive, and believe God's word in order to give it a chance to do what it says it will do if we get it in us. Romans 10, 17 says, Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So the word of God gives us faith. We need that. I'll be sharing some scriptures in just a moment with you, Lord willing. <coughs> I apologize, folks. Please forgive me. I'll be sharing some scriptures with you in a, Lord, in, in a few minutes, Lord willing, that tells us that our faith is key to us overcoming in the last days. But I want you to listen to these scriptures that very, very, very clearly tells us that all things are possible with God. We need this settled in our hearts. We need to know that that's the case. Jeremiah 32, 7 says, Ah, Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretched out arm, and there is nothing too hard for thee. And I looked that word nothing up and said, no thing is too hard for him. Jeremiah 32, 7. Remember, really take these scriptures serious, folks. Write down the references if you're not, right, listen, if you're not reading them along with me. And, and, and read them after we get off. There'll be a time you, you need, you're going to need these scriptures. Because things are going to possibly get so bad in the future for us as Christians as far as persecution and stuff comes that we're going to wonder if we're going to make it through or if, it's just, if God's going to deliver us or if it's too hard for us or if it's too, too hard for God. We may even begin to wonder that. And it says, Ah, Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretched out arm, and there is nothing too hard for thee. Sammy, God bless you, and Eva, God, God bless you too. Praise God. Sammy's watching from South Carolina, and Eva's over at E-Town. God bless you, Eva. It says, there's nothing, Jeremiah 32, 7, said, there's nothing too hard for God. Did you hear that? Nothing too hard for God. Nothing, folks, nothing. I don't care how discouraged you get. I don't care how, the situa how bad the situation looks. It doesn't matter. There's nothing too hard for God, and we need to accept that. We need to get these scriptures down inside of us and let, them, and let God use them for us when we start going through trials and stuff and bring them to our remembrance. There's nothing too hard for me. There's nothing I can't do. With God, nothing is too hard. God bless you. You're in Kentucky. Okay, God bless you. Praise God. With God, nothing is too hard. Why is that the case? Why is it the case that with God, nothing's too hard? Because he possesses unlimited power. Gary, God bless you. God bless you. Glad you're listening out there. Gary Puck is listening, and he's a artist that we, a music artist that we music at the station. Praise God. God bless you, Frank. Praise God. With God, nothing's too hard. And why is that the case? Because he possesses unlimited power. He knows no limits to his power. There is nothing God can't do. Nothing. Except what he says he can't do. And one thing's lie. He can't lie. Thank God for that. That's why I love God's word. It's the truth. Praise God. All of it's true from Genesis Revelation. Praise God. Thank you, Christy, uh, Christy, for listening. God bless you. Glad to have you out there again. With God, nothing is too hard because he's unlimited in power. In Revelation chapter 19, verse 6. Beth, God bless you. Glad you're listening and watching tonight. In, in Revelation 19, 6, the Bible 
knows that God is omnipotent. Do you know what that means? I'll tell you, <clears throat> I, I told some people earlier, Gary, I don't know if you can stay with me, but uh, I'm going to write this down. Gary, uh, skin cancer. I've had skin cancer three places, and they, God's healed me of all of them. And I had one, I had to have an operation on, but God healed me, and uh, all of them came back negative. Praise God. Praise God. That's wonderful. Wonderful. Praise God. That's great. Hallelujah. But I'm, I, was, I told somebody, I told somebody earlier when I first started, at the end of the broadcast, if the people stay with me, uh, if you have a prayer request, I'm going to take them right then and pray over them right then as you send them in to me. Here's what I encourage you to do. Uh, the people that come to a little church, I'm sure, and people that's out of town that don't listen to WJCR, uh, I'm sure you might want to send me a prayer request, and I'll, I'll pray over before we leave. But um, you can listen to WJCR starting at 8 o'clock Eastern time, and Brother Donnie will be having prayer line from his house, and he'll be glad to pray for your needs. Praise God. Yeah, Frank, there is a move that is... Uh, it's either awakening people or bringing them or something because there's a lot of stuff about the Lord going on in the United States, and I'm glad that that's the case. The Bible tells us in Revelation 19, 6, that 19, chapter 19, verse 6, that God is omnipotent. That means all-ruling, all-powerful, unlimited in power. He has no limits to his power. That's why there's nothing too hard for him. If you had unlimited power and someone came to you with a terrible disease that the doctor said there was no hope, would you have the power to heal them or not? Sure you would, because you have unlimited power. And because of God's love for us that he has, he wants to meet our needs. Praise God. He said the internet. Uh, 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 let me tell you all something. If you've got a smartphone, you can get the app Simple Radio, S-I-M-P-L-E. Simple Radio. That's an app. Get on the Simple Radio app. Hi, Carl. God bless you. Good to have you. Get on the Simple app, Simple Radio app, and you can listen to WJCR anytime you want to. Now, Frank is having a hard time streaming uh, with streaming right now, but that wouldn't do, have anything to do with WJCR. But I want to let you know that some people's called and told me they wouldn't get this good the other night. And I said, well, go to the Simple Radio app and you'll get us. And they did, and they got us good. Praise God. Yes, Gary, faith moves things. With faith, there's, it's, there's nothing that God can't move or do. God. Praise God. Judy, God bless you. Glad to have you watching tonight. Praise God. God is unlimited in power. That's why there's nothing too hard for him. There's nothing he can't do. So that is settled in my heart. And it needs to be settled in your heart. You need to be able to say that I truly believe there's nothing possible with God. That's the first thing. It needs to be settled in your heart. God. God bless you. Have you watching? You got two Judys. One right after the other come in. Judy Underwood and Judy Hood. God bless both of you. Praise God. Glad to have you watching. Praise the Lord. So we know there's nothing impossible with God because he's unlimited in power. And if you're unlimited in power, there's nothing you can't do. And he's the only being that's unlimited in power. Unlimited, he's limited in power. Man is limited in power. He's limited in power, but not God. He's unlimited in power. He's omnipotent. He's all-powerful, all-ruling. Praise God. And then in Matthew 19, 26, it says, With God, all things are possible. Melinda, God bless you. It's good to see you. Uh, your name on there. Bless your heart. I think about you and uh, your precious husband a lot and play your songs up there at the station. Praise God. That last song, that the, one of the last songs I, th I heard you wrote, don't worry about me. I play that. That's really a good song. Praise God. And Melinda, God bless you. 
And the Bible says in Matthew 19, 26, with God all things are possible. All things. Okay, don't, folks, here's what I try to get people to do. Don't, don't just let these things, these scriptures go in one ear and out the other. You know what people, we as people need to do, and I try to do this because the Bible tells us to do this. When we read the Word of God, we need to read it and meditate on it. Meditate on what it says. The Bible tells us in Isaiah, the 34th chapter, verse 16, to read the Word. The Bible tells us, God bless you, Melinda, thank you. And uh, the Bible tells us in Psalm 1 to meditate in the Word. And in Timothy, the second chapter, verse 15, and I think it's, I don't know if it's first or second Timothy, it tells us to study the Word of God. So there's three things the Word. Read it, meditate it, and study it. Well, a lot of people, just to be honest, don't take time to study it. But when you're reading it, you can take time to meditate in it. And that means read it slow enough that you take time to think about what it's saying. Think about it. Just stop on a verse. If you find a verse that really blesses you, just stop on that verse. And, and you're reading it and you come, you come across it, stop and think about that because that is God's word to you. If you're a Christian, that's God's word to you. Praise God. And then in Luke chapter 18, verse 27, Luke, Luke 18, 27, Jesus said, These things which... The things, I'm sorry, the things which are impossible with man are possible with God. You see, there are things that are an impossibility with people, with man. But there is nothing that's an impossibility with God. Hallelujah. I love that. I love to think about it. I love to meditate on that. That God that's is un, is all-powerful. All He's your father tonight if you're saved. He's your father. He is your father Praise God. He loves you. And we need to know that things that's impossible with man are not impossible with God. And anything that comes our way, some of you can testify to this because you've been through hard times. You've had times that were very trying to you. Times it was very hard to get through. There's a man listening tonight, and he was in the hospital for weeks on end. Get out, have to go back in. Get out, have to go back in. And it got to the place that it was life-threatening. He had to have three major surgeries. And he told me, he said, Brother Warren, I think I'm going to beat you to heaven. Joe Barry, God bless you. Keep watching if you can. Jeff, God bless you. Glad you're watching. And I said, no, I don't believe so. I called him by name, and I said, and his name, he probably don't care if my Joe's name. I said, Joe, I don't think so. God's not going to take you yet. Not ready. But he went through three major surgeries in a matter of about four months. And it was rough. But right now, glory to God, he's better and getting better all the time. He's home. He's doing much better. Praise God. And he told me, he said, you know, Brother Warren, what I went through. Now listen to this, folks. What I went through strengthened my faith. It did not destroy it. Now there's the choice you have to make. You know what the, the choice, you know, the choice that Joe made. He made this choice to stay with the Lord no matter what. He made, John, God bless you. You're welcome. And he made the choice to stay with God and not to leave the Lord. Now, trials will do one or two things. either drive you away from God or to God. And the choice is yours. But it was a hard time. And it was very stressful on him and his precious wife, Peggy, really went through it. Families, but them two really went through it. And so, uh, praise God, Joe decided to stay with the Lord. And he told me, he said, it's made me stronger. It's made me and Peggy both stronger. God bless you, John. And so trials can, if, if you let them, they can help you. He said, my faith is stronger than it's ever been. And so trials can 
either cause you to turn your back on God or they can cause you to turn to the Lord. If you read Psalm 68, the Bible says if you're going through a hard trial, to get along with God and pour your heart out to him, it says. Praise God. Yeah, Joe, I thank God he does. He not only keeps his hand on us, but he keeps I'm in his hand. I'm thankful for that. Praise God. People that love the Lord and save, they're in, they're in God's hands. Praise God. And so I'm going to get back to my message, but I want you to uh, know that there's nothing impossible with God, nothing too hard. Right? That's God's word. I read scripture. One of the problems, now listen to this. Please listen to me, folks. I won't be on a long time, Lord willing. Please listen to me. One of the, for your sake, God gave me the message, and he's already given it to me, and it's, it's done a work in me already, and I hope it'll do a work in you if you'll listen. Because I want you to make it. I want you to have, when trials come, I want you, uh, yes, see, very present help in our time and needs. What the Bible says, praise God. God bless you. Said she's thankful for Joe's faith. Now, everybody's probably reading that. I'm reading them, and I don't have to read them because, <laughs> but uh, uh, I, I sort, sort of feels like to me I'm reading. I'm seeing nobody else. Did, but everybody's seeing them. I think. Praise God. One of the problems we have with believing, believing and having faith. You ready? Listen to this. One of the problems that we have with believing, making it hard for us to believe. problems we have with believing is our looking at our trials from a human standpoint from an earthly view we look at things from from with our human reasoning are you listening we look at things from our human reasoning God wants us to stop looking at things from the natural standpoint and start looking at them from the supernatural standpoint. He wants us to see things from his view. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Listen. From, well, Aaron, God bless you. I'm glad you listened. From, from God, here it is, down here from our standpoint, a mountain looks bad, horrible. It looks impossible. It looks, it just looks like it's just something we just can't overcome. What looks like a mountain from our standpoint looks like a molehill from God's standpoint or just a tiny rise on the horizon or on the ground, just a tiny rise. Praise God. Think of that. From our standpoint, it looks big and hard to overcome and and like we couldn't overcome it, but from God's standpoint, it looks like nothing. And that's how he wants us to see it because that God that is a God of the impossible, the God that uh, uh, there's nothing too hard for him to do. Praise God. Okay, God bless you. My son said he watched later. He's recording at the church. He, he runs a sound cameras for the church where he goes and they're recording tonight and they record one night and play it on Sunday morning, I think. Praise God. Okay. Well, if something looks like a mountain, God looks like a, sees it as a molehill. He wants us to see things from his view. If you picture now, I want here right now is what I want you to do. I want you to, you're going through a mountain, you're going through a hard time, you got you got something, a problem in your life, something's going on that, uh, uh, that is, looks like it is hard to overcome or it looks like it's hard or it looks like something just impossible to, to have victory over, whatever it might be, then I want you right now to switch places from where you are on this earth. Now, now we're in heaven because the Bible says we're part of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God resides in us, praise God. And you know the Bible says, I didn't mean to get up, get up, but the Bible said, Jesus said, when you come up to heaven, you're going to sit on my throne with me and reign with me. Glory to God. I can give you the scripture out of Ephesians, I think it's the second chapter. Praise God. But now I want you to picture yourself in heaven. Now I want you to look down on earth and see that little bitty tiny spider that when you was down on earth looked like a mountain. And God said, no, that's just a mohill. That's just nothing. Nothing for me. Do. 
I'm going to give you victory over that. Praise God. We look at things from our human reasoning. Stop looking at things from the natural standpoint and start looking at them from a supernatural standpoint. He wants us to see things from his view. What looks like a mountain or of a problem from our standpoint looks like a molehill. I just shared all that with you. He wants us to see things from his view, folks. Start looking at things from his view. He looks at all things as being possible. Do you hear that? He looks at all things as being possible. Teresa, God bless you. He looks at all things as being possible with nothing being impossible. He sees nothing impossible. He doesn't see anything as hard. Listen to that. He does not see anything as hard to him. Yes, just what we're supposed to do, John. Walk by faith, not by sight. That's exactly right, what I'm talking about tonight. He sees nothing as impossible. He sees nothing as being too hard. Matter of fact, are you ready for this? Are you ready for this? He sees all things as being easy. He sees nothing hard. It's almost as if with God, there's hardly any effort that has to be put forth. He's unlimited in power. There is no limit to his power. And he wants us to see the same thing, the way, to see things the way he sees them. Praise God. To see them from his viewpoint. And he simply wants us to believe that he will do what we need done. Praise God. The moment that you and I the moment, this is for somebody, maybe one person, I don't know. But the moment that you and I choose to believe, nothing becomes impossible to us. Praise God. Jesus said in Mark, the ninth chapter, verse 23, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Praise God. Isn't that wonderful? Nothing impossible to us. Nothing impossible to us. Because God said, if you believe, you put faith in my word. Nothing's impossible to him that believes. Listen to this. Matthew 21, 22. All things. Whatsoever you shall, you shall ask in prayer, believing, you shall receive. How many things? All things. That trial you're going through, it's not impossible with God. Matter of fact, God wants to meet your need. God wants to do it. That's one of the things that keeps me going. As a Praise God. Well, Bruce and Sheila, God bless you all. Glad to have you all listening tonight. Bless your hearts. Praise God. That's one of the things that keeps me going is I know in my heart, not only can God do the things that, that needs to be done, he wants to do them. He wants to do them. There's a lot of different teachings about healing and God meeting our needs and so, a lot of them don't even know the word of God. And I want to tell you something. You're going to get mad at me, some of you are. You might turn me off. We got 24 right now. We'll probably have 15 when I get done here. But I want to tell you there's that there is nothing too hard for God. And the thing that blesses me is He wants to meet our needs. He desires to meet our needs. It's His will to meet our needs. Listen, folks, now listen. Some people say it's not God's will to heal everybody. Well, you tell that to Jesus when you stand before him. Because if what you said is true, he disobeyed God because he healed everyone that came to him. Praise God. I'm about to get up and run around the house. People say it's not God's will to heal all. But I want to tell you what happened when Jesus was here. Jesus said in John 6, 38, I've come to do the will of the Father. 
I have come to do the will of the Father. Listen to that now. Listen. Stop. Stop going back to your, old, your, your, your Christian belief or faith or whatever it is that comes from the church or comes from what you've taught all your life if it differs from the Word of God. Praise God. Yeah, Joe and Peggy said they're praising God for his healing. Yes, he's been healed. I told you about that earlier. God's done it. Praying for you every day. Joe can keep over completely. Now, some people say it's not God's will to heal all. Let me tell you something. Jesus said, I've come to do the will of the Father. Have you got that? John 6.38. Have you got that? John 6.38. Jesus come, said, I've come to do the will of the Father. When he died on the cross, he said one time one of his seven sayings was, it is finished. Do you know what he was saying there, folks? <laughs> Joe said, don't run. You get away from the phone. <laughs> That's what he thought. I won't run, Joe, but I feel like it sometimes. I won't run three times in my life. One time I was at the station here at WJCR, and Brother Don Powell Sr. was alive, and he, the Holy Spirit come on him, and he, he ran, started running around the church, and when he passed me, it's like somebody just jerked me out of the seat, and I was behind him. Then another person got behind me. We was running all, all around the church. Well, that's okay. Some people might not, don't, might not think that's good, but it don't matter. Lord, you, I'm going to do a lot of running in heaven. When I get through all that I, we're going to go through and force get there, if the Lord wills, one of my desires is just to go over heaven. Boy, I mean over the hills and every place and look at all the beauty of heaven. I want to see it. Praise God. I want to see it. I'll say I'll be back in a thousand years. Ain't no time over there, but I'm going to be, uh, it's just one continual day, but I'm going to go and I don't know when I get back. I love the stars. I'm going to go out in space and view the stars. I'm just going to have a good time. Praise God. Somebody might want to go with me. We'll go together. Praise God. Hallelujah. When Jesus was here, folks, are you ready? When Jesus was here, are you ready? to hear this everyone that came to him for healing he healed everyone and it says that in several places in the four gospels he healed all that came unto him praise God he said I come to do the will of the Father church because I've taught, taught it they know it they know it's true and I must hope some of you others do. Praise God. The Bible tells us that he come to do the will of the Father. Then the Bible tells us all that came to him, he healed. So what does that tell you about God's will? It's God, he did the will of God. He never done what Jesus. This is something a lot of people don't know. Don't think about Jesus. Never done anything of his own accord. He never spoke one word of his own. He never did one act of his own. Everything he said and everything he did was led by the Holy Spirit of God, by God leading him through his Holy Spirit. Yeah, you'll find that out. True, be true. Well, he said he never spoke a word of his own. He spoke only what the Father told him to say. He said it in John 14, chapter, the works I do, not my works, are God's works. The words I speak are not my words, are God's words. God. And so, Moses that he healed all that came to him. He, it's what it says. He meant it. He delivered those who needed deliverance. He provided need their needs. Praise God. And so it is God's will to heal. Praise the Lord. And I got off on that. And I got to get back. Matthew 21, 22. And all things whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, believing you shall receive. If the Lord wills. If the Lord wills. There's not hardly anybody right now listening, I don't think, to me that, that listens to prayer line. If you do, just go right on and listen to prayer line with Brother Donnie tonight. But after this is over, praise God. That's what it says. That's what it says. Healed by the stripes of Jesus. Praise God. By his stripes we are healed. Isaiah 53, 4 and 5. And with, and with his stripes we were healed, the Bible says. And I think it's uh, 2 Peter 2, 24. In Mark, the 11th chapter, verse 24, listen to this. I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. Now, that's God's word. He just wants us to have faith and believe. It's all there available to us, everything. 
Not one time did Jesus pray over somebody and say, if it's God's will, be healed. Or not one time do we have record. God bless you, Jeanette. God bless you. Not one time did we have record that he prayed over. You know, one one man, I read, a, I read a, an article that one man wrote about the healing that Jesus did. And he said in the article, from all the study I've done, I've studied it and studied it. He said, trying to figure out about approximately how many people he ministered to when he was here. He said, I've come to conclusion between 100 and 200,000 people Jesus ministered to while he was here on this earth. And not one time in the word of God do we find a place where God said, or Jesus said when he prayed for somebody, not once do we have a place. It's not in the four gospels. One time do we have a place where it says when Jesus prayed, he said, Father, if it be your will, not once. Oh, we all, we're all messed up. We're all messed up in some beliefs in our churches and stuff. I'm so sorry. We need to get back to the word of God and what it says. God. Jesus said, I say unto you what things soever you desire when you pray. Believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Notice a word in that verse. Anybody listen to me still? Listen to this verse. Listen. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever you desire. He didn't say need. He said desire. He said whatever you desire. People say, no, he didn't really mean that. Okay, that you stand before God and say that. And change God's word. Listen, folks. Psalm 37, 3, I think it is, says, Delight thyself in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. You got to do the delight first. Delight thyself in the Lord, and he'll give you the desire of your heart. Praise God. God is. We need to leave this world's way of thinking and cross over to God's way of thinking. Did you hear that? This is the message that comes to me today from the Lord to give tonight. It's helped me, and I hope it helps you. We need to leave the world's way of thinking and cross over to God's way of thinking. There's a scripture that tells us that we need to think the way God wants us to think. We need, we need to think the way he, he, in the heaven thinks, the way Jesus thought. Listen to this. We need to cross over into God's way of thinking. Listen. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Let this mind be in you, which, also, which was also in Christ Jesus. What? Let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. Did he thank the world? Did he thank the way that the world thought? Or did he think the way he wanted him to think? Every thought he had came from the Father through the Holy Spirit. Every thought. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Jesus didn't look at things from a worldly way or worldly standpoint. He looked at everything from God's standpoint. You see, that thing you're going through, that problem, it's just a minor thing to God. There's a man I knew back in the 70s. You listening, folks, you need to hear this. A man I knew back in the 70s, he come to our church. I was pastoring a church back then. I pastor, actually pioneered four churches, and, and the Lord blessed us, and we was, we, was, we was at this one particular church, and he came. I, I'd heard about his testimony, so I asked him to come to church and give his testimony. And this man, nothing but an absolute miracle happened to him. Praise God. Praise God. I got one from John. got one from Beth. Yep. She said we need to think as he did and walk as he did and walk as he and talk as he did. Doing the will of the Father. Oh, I, I'm reading something you already see. Okay, never mind. I, 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 I'm the only one seeing these things. Y'all see all that they're writing. Praise God. Praise God. 
this man came to our church and gave his testimony. It's one of the most amazing testimonies I've ever heard. And I've heard a lot, boy. I love, I've heard some tremendous testimonies, unbelievable testimonies, testimonies that only God could have, could have brought about. Many of you have. I know many of you have too. He came and gave his testimony. And here, here's what he said. This is what he said. He, I, he had, I already talked to him, but he, he said to the church, he said, I had cancer all through my body. The doctor that I had that was working with me, trying to help me, he said, you've got cancer in many areas of your body. And we don't have no way of doing anything for you. And he said, you've got approximately this short period of time to live. So it got pretty bad and he ended up going to the hospital on a, uh, going to the hospital on a Sunday night, Sunday day, I guess, during the day. And when he went into the hospital and they admitted him, the doctor got his wife alone and told her, she said, your husband will be dead by Thursday. Said he's got the most four days to live. And so there it was. And the sentence had been passed and it was time for him to leave in a few days. But his wife left and went home. His wife left and went home. Came back the next morning. And when she came in the room, he was sitting on the side of his bed with his street clothes on. And she said, what are you doing? This is the testimony he gave. And he said, I'm going home. She said, oh, you can't go home. You've got to stay here. You've got to stay here. And he said, no, I'm going home. And he said, I won't tell you what happened to me last night. Mm-mm-mm. He said, I was laying here in bed, and he said, you know the pain I've been in. And he said, I was in such excruciating pain that I couldn't hardly stand it. He told me later, he said, the pain, Brother Warren, you don't know how painful it was. He said, as you've been through something like this, you just don't know how hard, how hard it was and how bad it was. And he said, I was laying there in my bed. There was another man in the room with a semi-private room, but he, the curtains was drawn between the two, and they couldn't see each other. <clears throat> and he said, all of a sudden, laying there in bed, there was a flash of light. There was a light at the end of my bed, just a brilliant light. And I looked up, and it was Jesus Christ at the end of my bed. He said, he walked around my bed to the, my side and stood there and talked to me. Now, I don't know what all they talked about because he said it lasted four hours. He talked to him for four hours. I don't know how that, I don't know how that all worked, but he said he talked, they talked for four hours. But he said, here's what happened. The Lord told him, said, don't you worry. You're not going to die. You're going to live. And he said, He, after we talked, he disappeared. And he said, I was still in pain, Brother Warren. I thought I was going to get it right then. But I was in pain. I was in such pain. It was all over my body. Every part of my body was hurting. And he said, I left that Monday morning, went home. And then he said, I was home Monday and Tuesday, Wednesday, still alive but I was still hurting. And he said, I was laying on the sofa in my living room and my wife had gone to the store. It would be just a short trip store back. And she, he said, all of a sudden laying there on that sofa, I felt this coldest feel that you've ever felt come into the room. It was just cold, just saturated, a bad, a deep cold, a bad cold kind of cold. He said, it was, didn't feel good. Immediately it was death. And I, that death had come in the room 
And he said, I looked up upward and I said, Lord, you told me to be healed. Why is this happening? And instantly that spirit left. Instantly he left as soon as he prayed that prayer. Praise God. So he said his wife come home and she'd brought a newspaper with her. I remember back then because I used to look in, in the newspaper and the Courier Journal. I used to look at for revivals and meetings going on and my wife and I and family went all the time. And so he said, I spotted a revival. He said a man praying for the sick at Evangel Tabernacle in Louisville, Kentucky, right there where he lived in Louisville. And he, he said, I said, I'm, I, I said, I told my wife, I said, I'm going to that meeting tomorrow night. She said, you, you can't go. You know how, but the doctor said, he said, I'm going. And he said, Brother Warren, when he came, I could hardly move. The pain was so excruciating. He told me so hard. I couldn't hardly do anything. I couldn't move. It was just so painful. I never felt pain like that. He said, but I got my clothes on. And I told her, I said, take me to the church. Praise God. He said, I went to the church. And I got in one of the pews. And I sat there through the whole service. He said, I was such, such a shooting pain. I couldn't hardly sit still on that pew. And he said, when the man got done with this message, oh, praise God, Joe, oh, I'm about to run again. He said he gave an invitation for anybody that wanted to come. This man was praying for the sick. He was trying to lead people to the Lord, but also he had a time when he was praying for the <coughs> excuse me, sick. And so he said, when he, he said, anybody wants prayer for the sick, you come forward. We're going to lay hands on you and pray for you. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. And he said, I got up, Brother Warren, and I went forward. And he said, when it come my time, when that man laid his hands on my forehead, he said, I immediately fell out in the spirit. I fell down on the floor on the carpet in that aisle, and I was out. He said, I was not conscious of anything going on around me, nothing. I went out, like passed out. He was gone, just out. He said, 20 minutes later, I woke up. And when I woke up, the very first thing I felt was I had no pain. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Mm, mm, mm. I still get excited thinking about that. And he said, I went back to my doctor. The doctor examined me and he said, this is not possible. You had cancer all over your body. You should be dead. This is not possible. And he said, I want you to let me call four of the doc doctors in. And we want to examine you, all of us. I said, he said, okay, you can. And they, they put him through tests, examined him, done things. Couldn't find a spot of cancer nowhere. Glory to God. And he said, here's what the doctor did. I was sitting in the chair in front of his desk when he's done. After it got all done and all the tests had been run, all this stuff, however long it took, and and uh, he said I was sitting in front of his desk. He had my records laying right there in front of him, and he said I cannot explain this. This is not normal. It's something beyond this world. And he says he took a pen. You get ready. Wrote across his record, miracle, and stuck it in the door. Yeah, well, glory. Praise God. Praise God. We need to leave this world's way of thinking and cross over to God's way of thinking. And the scripture tells us that. Philippians 2, 5, I read that. Listen to this. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses, verse 16, and the last part of the verse. But we have the mind of Christ. It's, we have the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ was never defeated by the enemy. The mind of Christ never thought what the devil wanted him to think. He always thought what God wanted him to think. He thought what, uh, what they, well, as we read the Old Testament, but he was the word, but he thought the way God wanted him to think. We have the mind of Christ. He wants us to cross over into his realm of thinking, the supernatural realm. In order to do that, we must do what's necessary to undo 
the years of worldly training and conditioning that we've had done to us. Listen to this now. In order to cross over into the realm the way God thinks and wants us to think, we have to undo, we have to undo the years of worldly training, conditioning that's been done to us. We've been conditioned by the world to believe in the natural, the five senses. How do we do that? How do we, how do we get rid of that? Oh, you and well, the main way is in God's word. His word will change our natural reasoning and our human beliefs into a reasoning and belief. Do you hear that? His word will change our natural reasoning and our human beliefs into, into supernatural reasoning and belief. Listen to this. His word will change our unbelief into belief. His word will change our doubt into faith. It will change our worldly way of thinking into a heavenly way of thinking. It will change the way Satan wants us to believe to the way God wants us to believe. Now listen to me, please. I ain't got much longer. 17 more pages and I'm done. No, I'm just kidding. The devil wants us to believe the way the world believes. Listen to this now. The devil wants us to believe the way the world believes. With natural human reasoning. You know why? Because he has no problem overcoming that kind of reasoning or kind of belief. Natural reasoning is no obstacle for Satan. He doesn't have a problem overcoming our worldly way of thinking in trying to conquer our trials and troubles. He doesn't have a problem with doing it. He can defeat us every time. But Satan does have a problem with biblical faith, godly faith, faith that comes from God's word. The devil hates that kind of faith. Because he can't overcome it. He can't have victory over it. It always conquers him. And whatever he's trying to do, with anything he's trying to do in our lives, our faith in God and his word always conquers him. Scriptural faith always conquers Satan in all that he tries to do in our lives. And there's scriptures that prove that. Ephesians 6, 16, above all, taking the shield of faith. The shield of what? The shield of faith. The shield of what? The shield of faith. Wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Listen to that. Above all things, above all, taking the shield of faith. Wherewith ye shall be able to quench, put out all the fiery darts of the wicked. Praise God. How many darts? All of them. Our faith in God and his word gives us victory over all that comes our way in this world. And some of you could say amen to that because you've done the experience and you've been through it. Our faith in God and his word gives, gives us victory over all that comes our way in this world. Scripture for that too. 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. And whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Praise God. Praise God. I'm almost done, folks. And it's the word of God that gives us, the, it gives us faith. Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. There is nothing impossible with God. Listen to these three things. Listen, there's nothing impossible with God. There's nothing too hard for God. And there's nothing that he doesn't want to do for you and me. Praise God. You know, some people think they love their family more than God loves them. 
they believe there's people that believe there's people that believe that God doesn't will to heal. But yet, if they had somebody in their family that was sick and one of your children, precious child of yours, comes through. Yes, John, he loves you. He loves you more than you know. In all of eternity, you'll never know how much. All of us, same way. Praise God. The Word of God gives us faith. Romans 10, 17 talks about that. Praise God. Now listen to this. These three things. Nothing impossible with God. Nothing too hard for God. And there's nothing that he doesn't want to do for you and me. He wants to meet our needs. He wants to heal us. I tell you about people think they love they, they love their children more than God does. If you had if I had the power to heal a, they they say they well, God don't want to heal everybody. But if if you but if you listen to what they say, they have a child or children that are sick, say a precious little girl or boy is sick. Come to you and say, Daddy or Mommy, will you heal me? And you have the power to do it. They know you do. Will you heal me? What are you going to do when they come to you? I think if most of you could speak right now and tell me, you'd say, I'd heal them. Sure, I'd heal them. And you know what I'd do? And ask you, after, if you said that, here's what I'd ask you. Why would you heal them? If all of your, if you had four kids and it's all sick with coronavirus and you could heal all of them, what would you do? You had the power to heal them. What would you do? I know what some of you do. Most of you, you say, I'd heal them. Why? Why would you heal them? Why would you heal them? I can tell you the answer. It's a four-letter word. And you say, you would say, because I love them. And yet, somehow, we've got this idea that God don't love us enough to heal us, want to heal us. And that's saying they believe they love their children more than God does. That is so silly. The Bible says that God's love for us is not comprehensible. I think it's the third chapter of, 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 of Colossians, I believe. His love is beyond our comprehension. You know why it is, folks? Did you ever wonder why God's love is beyond our comprehension? We can't comprehend it like the Bible says. Do you ever wonder why? I'll tell you why. It's very simple. The Bible says that God is beyond our comprehension. We can't comprehend him. I have preached the message one time, and I've preached it two or three times since I got it the first time, the awesomeness of God. And I brought things out in the scriptures about how awesome he is. Did you know, folks, let me tell you, let me tell you something. Uh, don't, don't leave me now here. Don't leave me. You say, well, you're getting off and get crazy here. I'm giving you the word of God. The Bible says that God's right hand, right hand, stretches across the universe. Well, I just lost somebody who said, well, Brother Taylor, you've gone off now. Well, if I've gone off, I've gone off on the Word. Because it's, it's in the Word. His right hand spans, stretches across the universe, the heavens. Mm -mm -mm. He's more awesome and greater than we can ever imagine. Glad you're watching, Sandy. God bless you. That over with here, but glad you tuned in. Praise God. God loves you, and he wants to do it for you. He wants to do it more than you want it done. Let me ask you something. Do you think God wants to save people? Why Why? Why is it? Why does he want you to most say yes? Well, why? Bible says he's not willing to any should perish, but that all should come to repent. Not willing to any should perish, but that all should come to repent. So he wants everybody to be saved. Why? Because he loves them. 
And that same God that wants to, everybody to be saved wants everybody to be healed. Exodus 15, 26. God said, I am the Lord that healeth thee. Listen to this. I love Psalm 103, first five verses. Oh, read that Psalm tonight. Read it slow, the first five verses, folks. He said, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not, forget not. Don't forget the benefits. Forget not the benefits. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Forget not his benefits, the Bible says. Don't forget his benefits. Do you work at a place? There used to be people, it used to be every place you work gave you benefits. They don't do it anymore. But one of the things people looked to when they first got when, went to get a job is they, they wanted to know what the benefits were. That's one of the first things I'd ask when I was implying, uh, applying for a job. Benefits. Well, God has benefits. Five of them. Five of them. They're found in, 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 in Psalms 103, verses 1 through 5. Five benefits. The first one, who forgiveth all thy iniquities. That's salvation. That's when you get saved, when all your sins get forgiven. Who forgiveth all thy iniquities. Do you know what the second one is? Who healeth all thy diseases. Praise God. He said, don't forget the five benefits, folks. He tells us in his word not to. Okay, I'm about done. Second, the third John chapter two says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. God wills for you to be successful and be in health, not sick. Luke 12, 32, Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Praise God. Philippians 4, 19, but God shall supply all of my needs according to all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Psalm 37, 4, delight thyself also in the Lord. He shall give the desires of thine heart. We need to have these three things there. Nothing's impossible with God, nothing too hard for God, and there's nothing that God don't want to do for you. Now, let me, let me make this clear. The Bible says when it comes to asking for something that's sinful, God said he's, the answer is no. Am I back with you now? Sorry about that. I hear something that didn't mean cut us off. I'm sorry. I hope you're still there. Yeah, 23 people still there. Praise God. There's nothing that God doesn't want to do for you. Now, I was telling you, he won't answer your If you want him to heal you so you can go out and sin more, he won't do it. He says in James chapter 1, verse 14, 15, when sin is finished, it brings forth death. He said in that same book, book he said, you, when you ask, you ask it amiss to consume it upon your own lust, the answer is no. I knew a, a minister came to Louisville, Kentucky and held a meeting. Just a gob of people came. Yes, it must, Elizabeth. You're, well, yeah, it's what, according to what his word says. Yes, I agree with you. Our desires must be in line with his word. If you love the Lord, born again, person is, we don't have a problem with that. But a lot of times, Elizabeth, <laughs> we claim to be Christian. A lot of people do, and but their desires are not in line with God's word. And you're exactly right. Our desires must be in line with God's word. Praise God. This minister came to Louisville, and I'm going to end here, folks. Came to Louisville, Kentucky, and well, I'm going to end the message. He come and said, uh, he had uh, big crowds and he was praying for the sick. And the lady came up to be prayed for. And God said, don't pray for her. I'm not going to heal her. Woo! Said, uh, he said, don't pray for her. I'm not going to heal her. Tell her to get out of the line. And he told her, he said, ma'am, I can't pray for you. God said, told me you're not going to be healed. And the Lord told him why. He said, the purpose she's coming for 
is so she can go out to the bars and the honky tonks and dance and sin and drink. And she said she's wanting to be healed. Her legs were had, were bad where she couldn't dance anymore. And she wanted to, that's like the thief on the cross, remember? He said, "Get it. if you be the son of God, get us down from here. All he wanted to do was stay and sin more in this world. And that's what she came for. And he said, I can't pray for you. Because you're 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 wanting to you're wanting to sin. You're wanting to be healed so you can sin. Praise God. I don't know what that means, Joshua. I don't understand. He sent me a question. Well, if, I'm not going to heaven if that's not there. That means praise God. But anyway, we need to get those keep those three things settled in our hearts. So when hard times come, we can know that God's going to meet our needs. I hope tonight's message has helped somebody to realize that it is God's will to meet every need you've got. But listen, folks, the reason I was talking about uh, faith, and uh, I believe there's times coming for us that we're going to really need a strong faith. It just takes a commitment and say, Lord, here's my life. I give it to you. I don't want it anymore. You know, back in the 70s, I uh, had what I call was a garden of Gethsemane. Do you know what a garden of Gethsemane experience is? Remember what Jesus did? He said, Father, not my will be done. Not my will be done, but your will be done. A garden of Gethsemane experience is one that's so bad that it breaks us to the place that we just quit and give up to God and say, God, okay, your will, not mine. That's what happened to me when I was something I was going through in the 70s. Make a commitment to the Lord where you just say, not my will be done and mean it and mean it. If it means to the death, because after that, a few hours later, Jesus died and it may mean to our death but so be it. So be it. Your will be done. That's what God wants us to do is commit our lives to him totally, completely. Praise God. Well, Joshua, that's a, that's a person that for me, as far as I'm concerned, um, doesn't have everything in right priority. You know, there's nothing wrong with loving animals, but no animals God, no animal. I'm going to tell you something else. There's no human being in our lives that's supposed to be loved above God. You read the 14th chapter of Luke, and you'll see what Jesus said. Very strong, strong, powerful statement. And I just read where he said, if you don't love and the ones he listed, including it yourself, less than me, you cannot be my disciple. He has come first. Praise God. Did you know that's why he died on the cross? He came from heaven saying, I'm, I've come to do the will of someone. I've come because my father loved more than anything that I do in myself. Praise God. He came and died. Uh, I'm going to, I would tell you something, but you, you, you think I was wrong, and it's okay to think it's wrong, but I mean, you, you, you think I was teaching you false. And uh, maybe I'll talk about it one of these days, about the real reason Jesus died on the cross. Praise God. Uh, what scripture uh, are you talking about, Beth? I don't know what, script, what it was you're asking scripture about. Um, but anyway, um, God loves you. Before we go off tonight, I want to ask if there's anybody listening that's not sure. And before you before you get go away after we get done praying, I guess I'm going to tell you. Praise God. That's found in the uh, 28th chapter. I mean, the the end of uh, not 28th. I think it's the 20. I think at least three of the Gospels, and maybe all four of them, have him being in the Garden of Gethsemane. Just read those. Just read those scriptures, and you'll see where he said, 
See, this is what God wants from us. He wants a total commitment. And nothing or no one coming ahead of him. And he said, if you do have things ahead of me, you won't, you won't be my disciple. You can't be my disciple. Boy, that's rough. But I made that decision. I've made that decision, and I hope you have. Praise God to put him first above everybody and everything. Praise God. And uh, I want to pray. And if there's anyone listening tonight, we had three, four, five people text us that they either got saved or rededicate their lives to the Lord. Praise God. If I don't get any more response like in that way ever again, it was worth being on these last three weeks. Praise God. It was worth being on that night. If you are not saved and you know you need to be, then pray this prayer with us if you want to make that decision. God loves you. He says today is the day of salvation. This is the day to be saved. He says don't put it off because tomorrow might not come for you. It might not come for you. Today is the day of salvation. And everyone listening tonight will not be able to stand before God and say, you didn't give me a chance, Lord. Because he's going to say, oh, yeah, you remember that 23rd day of April in 2020 when you listened to that broadcast of that old country preacher and he was giving people an opportunity to come to the Lord and be saved and you said no? Yeah, I gave you a chance. I gave you a chance. Tonight, if you want to make that decision, you're ready to give your life to the Lord and turn your back on sin, give up sin. You have to be willing to repent. You've got to be willing to say no to sin, turn your back on sin to follow him. It's a commitment. It's not a just pray the prayer and go your way. It's a commitment to follow him from now on. Give up your life for his, that's the life he has for you. Give up the life you have now, Satan has you doing, for the life that Jesus has for you. If you do it and you mean it, and you mean it, if you mean it, you'll never be sorry you did. Praise God. Pray this prayer with me. Say, Dear Jesus, I believe in my heart that you are the Son of God. And I believe, Lord, you died for me on a cross and you took my sins. And I believe, Jesus, you were buried and rose again from the dead on the third day. I admit to you tonight that I am a sinner. I have sinned. And I ask you right now, Will you forgive me of all my sins, of everything I've done wrong? Will you come into my heart and into my life and save me and make me God's child? The best I can, Lord, I give my life to you. I surrender it to you, and I accept you now as my Lord and my Savior. And I am saved. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. If anybody did that, love to hear from you right now. Please tell me. I just prayed with you, Brother Warren, and gave my heart to the Lord or rededicated my life, whatever you want to say. Been good to have all of you here. Praise God. All of you that's tuned in. We had up to 25, I think, or twenty, maybe 26, 26 at one time. We got 22 now. But I'm glad they tuned in. At least they had a chance to listen. Praise God, whether they stayed or not. And Praise God. Yes, yeah, most important decision in life. Beth, God bless you. God bless you. I want you to turn it over to God, Beth, and let go of it. He'll be waiting for you tonight to come to him. With it in your hands, you take your, you come to the Lord. And in front of you, he's going to have his hands stretched out to you, Beth. Put together like you're like holding, gonna cut, like something you'd hold in it. Just not. He's gonna put your hands together, and, and he's gonna put them together. And if you're gonna be able to take your, it's in your hands. You take your hands over the top of his bed. You turn your hands upside down. You let that fall out in his hands. You bring your hands back, turn down, not turn back up, or you can take it back. Now he's got it. You give it to him, and I promise you will trust him. He will meet the need. He will work things out, and in the end, you'll be able to say, Beth. 
God did it. God did it. God's will be done. That's what he's wanting. God's will. Anybody want to let us know that you prayed that night tonight? If you did, just let me know right now and we'll we'll tell them that you did. Praise God. Also, I want to uh, um, I've done forgotten now. I had two or two announcements and done forgot one of them. Praise God. Well, if God wants me to tell it, he'll bring it to me. Joe, bless your heart, Joe. Yeah, it's a prayer God gave me. He gave that prayer to me about a year or two years ago. And he said, every time you pray, we want to pray. He said him and his wife just rededicated their life to the Lord. God bless you, Beth. It's going to be okay. Just give it to God and let it go. Let God have it. Say, so don't want you to do that because he wants to be all worried and bothered. You don't have to be worried and bothered. It's, it's in God's hands. God's going to take care of it. Praise God. Now, oh yeah, here's the second thing. Uh, if you have a prayer request right now, please call me. Please call me. Well, Joshua says you should take Q&As. Well, I could, but I don't uh, have the, I don't know all the answers to everything people want, <laughs> have problems with, but I can if you've got a question. But here's what I want you to do. If you've got a prayer request, send it to me real quick. Just a little short prayer request. Say, God to meet a need or heal somebody or well, Jeanette, God bless you. God bless you. Teresa Carter rededicated my life to the Lord. Thank God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Teresa. God bless you. Thank you, Jeanette. Thank you. Praise God. God's a good God, ain't he? Joe, God bless you. Yeah, my son's happy. He it makes us happy. Praise God. Got one prayer request right now for Gary, for Gary Puckett for skin cancer. Uh, they said they've all came back negative, so I don't know if that means they're still testing him or if he's uh what what's going on but he said pray for that and i said okay we will and uh boy thank you, the lord for all those people that's uh, a couple doing it and uh, two people praise god that is wonderful that gets them excited uh, that's the greatest thing that happens to me <coughs> excuse me is to see somebody come to the lord let me tell you something if you're ever in a meeting and it's a good meeting a lot of people and, and they've just given an invitation. And a lot of people going forward, I used to watch Billy Graham on TV. And I would tell my wife, I said, when they gave the invitation, she'd be busy in the kitchen doing something. I'd tell my wife, I said, come here a minute, I want to show you something. I want to show you the most beautiful thing you'll ever see in life. This is it for me. I love oh, everything so beautiful. God. But here it is. Praise God, Bruce and Sheila. God bless you. God bless you. Just rededicated their lives. Well, God bless you both. Well, bless your hearts. That is wonderful. That is wonderful. God bless you. Now you belong to God. Praise God. Here's one from Jeanette. Uh, it's a, I'm just going to put down Linda, heart failure. Okay. Praise God, Sam. God bless you. Praise God. Praise God. Uh, heart failure. Okay. Got that. We're going to pray over that. Praise God. Anybody else have something they want prayer for? Praise God. God has been so good. Praise God, Elizabeth. God bless you for watching. We, we appreciate that. She lives, I think you live in Georgia, don't you, Elizabeth? Praise God. I think this is a friend of my son, Joshua. He's known for quite a while. And they met over the internet, I think. And, uh, and uh, Jeanette wants also prayer for her sister. Okay, okay. We'll pray for her. Anybody else got one real quick before we pray? Just send it to me and we'll pray over it. Praise God. Praise God. Send me a prayer request and we'll pray for it. Now, they're praying on prayer line right now. A lot of people may go went there and... Okay, Judy, been, I've prayed for your son. Pray for her son. Needs God to straighten out his life. Okay, what was you saying, Joshua? Oh, you know her by grace. Okay, okay. 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 Oh, okay. Are you the mother 
uh, this is a different lady I'm thinking about. Are you a mother? Are you, a, Elizabeth, are you a mother, the mother of Eliza? Praise God. Okay. Uh, Joe said, Joe Clan said, prayer for church family and the nurses. We got several nurses at the church. At the church. Now, that's my fault because I prayed. I prayed. Uh, okay, Elizabeth. Okay. Okay. Okay, good. I'm now. I know. God bless you. I know who you're. Uh, yeah. Do you live in Georgia? Elizabeth, praise God. Uh, okay, Ashley wants prayer for her, her and her family and lost family members. Okay. 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 God to save him. Oh, I got it. Judy, I got it. It's just straighten out his life. That would straighten out his life, wouldn't it? <laughs> to save him. Praise God. Eva uh, Kitchens. Prayer for family. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. God bless you, Elizabeth. That's a great work. Great work. She does work in the prisons. That is wonderful. It's not everybody can do that. Not everybody wants to. Uh, but I'm glad you do it. Praise God. I used to do that back in the 70s. I still was going to prisons and jails, uh, pr jails until up until this stuff stopped us all. Praise God. Anybody else? We've got Gary, Jeanette, Judy, Joe, Clan, Ashley, and Eva. Anybody else? Praise God. Now, I, I believe that the people that's listening out there, we done lost a bunch because uh, the meat, I guess they didn't, don't want to stay around, stay around for prayer. But Okay, okay. Uh, Josh is a Georgia fan. Pray for the pregnancies of Christy Styles Donnelly and my brother's girlfriend. And Jamie is pregnant with twins. Oh, my goodness. Okay, I'm just going to put Ashley. What I'm going to do this is prayer for um, Christy. Um, brother's girlfriend. I pray for her every night about her pregnancy already. And uh, Jamie. Okay. Okay. And Sam for lost dog. Okay. We sure will, Sam. Praise God. Anybody else? Praise God. Christy, brother's girlfriend, and Jamie. And that's not Christian that comes to the we need to pray for her too, don't we, Ashley? Kirsten? I said Kirsten. Uh, I'm gonna put her down here too. Kirsten. Okay. Okay. Anybody else? We get ready to pray. Praise God. Okay, hey, all of you people that's out there, and most of you is it's there right now, you're saved. I'm sure of that. The majority of you are. And uh, I want you to agree with me in prayer. Uh, my son was having bad dreams, but I haven't had any more bad dreams. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Praise God. Okay, Tammy, my daughter, it's her left wrist needs prayer. And God will heal you. My daughter's got to, uh, oh, that's her. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Kathy. That's her horse. Pray for Angel. That's her horse, I think. Got a bad report. Got hoof problems, and I've been praying about that. Okay. Okay, my daughter, uh, I'll share the testimony sometime, but Lord willing, but she uh, is a cancer survivor. She's she's he been healed by the Lord. 
the doctor told her the most she had time to live was two years. This is 2012, folks. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. And he, he, she told the doctor when it's all done, she said, I'm going to live, doctor. I'm not going to die. God's going to heal me. And uh, he said, well, I'll believe that. When you come in my office, if you live five years, I come in my office, I'll tell you that you're cancer-free. Well, it's been eight years, folks. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. She don't have any cancer and not getting any cancer. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. God's a good God. Praise God. Anybody else before we pray? Okay, folks, here's what I want you to do, <coughs> if possible. Um, are you watching on your phone or laptop? Okay. Yes, yes. I want you just to touch your, your phone, your laptop. If you're around there with somebody that's more than one of you, you're both watching, you might hold hands. But here's what I, I want us to do. Jesus said, if any two agree together as touching anything they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. Listen now, I'm going to say that again. If any two people if you got somebody there with you, that's two. You and I are two. You and the other person, uh, uh, Josh is praying. He, uh, you're, you're two. Uh, Jeanette's praying. I'm with her. That's two. See, there were twos. We've joined up by twos. Got a lot of twos praying. And so, praise God. I want us to agree together. Here's what it means. Now, listen, folks. If you're going to do this, a, a different a way that most people do, it, it's not agreeing. I just, you know, I don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. I, ain't, I don't say no church. Or but we go to, I've been to many, many churches, and they'll have people come to altar and pray. Let's all pray. And they're all up there praying, but they're all praying something else, different prayers. That's not what the word agree means. The word agree in the Greek means to make your prayer as one with the other one, the other person. So when I, my wife was alive and we prayed, we seen a lot of miracles. God seen, seen a lot of people healed because she knew how to agree. When I would pray, she was saying, Lord, I agree with his prayer. I make my prayer one with his. That's agreeing. Then those two prayer, prayers come up together. And join together and join as one prayer. Then we have a lot of people doing that. It's a, it becomes a mighty prayer rising up to God. I can feel the Holy Ghost. I mean, some, comes, and so I want us to agree. I want to agree with uh, Elizabeth. I want to agree with Jeanette. I want to agree with Joe and Peggy. Uh, with all that's listening here. My son, Judy. Uh, all that's still listening. I want to agree with them. I agree with them, and I want they're going to agree with me, and 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 you're going to and they're going to agree with the other people that's on here. That's right, Elizabeth. You got it. <laughs> you got it, boy. Oh yeah, I don't know. You know, and I'm going to tell you something else. When a person's at the altar saying, if it's your will, Lord, heal this person, I can't agree with that because I already know it is. Praise God. I already know it is. And so uh, and, and so when it comes to healing, I pray with people that agree. I I, I love the people that at the Pray Precious People Little Church and my family that's saved. They they know that God wills to heal. And so I agree, we can agree. One. See, that's agreeing. That's agreeing in prayer. That's making our prayers one with each other. One prayer. That's what God hears. See, at, at unity, what did do happen? When was the outpouring of the Holy Ghost in the book of Acts, second chapter, one mind, one accord? We're praying together in one mind, and God will pour out his Holy Ghost, pour out his Spirit. He'll touch people. He'll minister to them. He'll meet their needs. So right now, let's pray for Gary. Lord, we, we don't know what's going on with Gary. 
he said, pray for the skin cancer. And then he said, it all comes back negative. So we don't know if he's had a, some tests and not enough tests or what's going on. But whatever it is right now, with those who will agree with me in prayer, I agree with them in asking, will you touch Gary and rid his body of all cancer? From this night on, it's gone. It's just flushed out through the bottom of his feet and went into hell where it belongs. Because it's not of you. And I bind that from coming back on him or anyone else. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. For Jeanette, for Linda, and her heart failure. Now, God, I know that you can heal, Linda, and there is a lot of people listening tonight that knows you can. So I agree with those who will agree with me for Linda. And I ask in prayer, would you touch Linda? Will you heal her? Will you do a miracle? Will you raise her up, Lord, in Jesus' name? And, Lord, we pray for her sister. We don't know what's wrong, but we pray for her or sister. Will you touch her sister? Will you heal her sister? Will you make her whole? All of you that's agreeing with me and you're saying amen, I agree. With, I'm agreeing with this prayer. That's good. God's hearing that. And, Lord, we pray for Judy, her son. He has the greatest need a person can have to be saved. So right now, all of us that's on here still praying and agreeing, we all agree for her son. And we agree in asking this prayer, will you do whatever you have to do to reach him, but reach him before it's everlastingly too late. And we pray that you will do it as easy as possible, but that you will bring him to the place that he'll come to you, get down on his knees and cry out to you and be saved. In Jesus' name. And then watch over, protect him, keep him safe. Praise God. Praise God. And then, Lord, we pray for Joe's request. Praise God. Okay. Eva, we'll get to that in a moment if you want to. We pray for the prayer request that Joe had for the church family. You know, everybody goes there regular, on a regular basis. So we pray for the entire church that you, God, will have your way and will in the life of that church, but especially in the life of the, peop of the lives of the people that come there, that you'll watch over them, protect them, and keep them safe, every one of them. Don't let them get away from you. Don't let them backslide, Lord, while we're going through this. Let them stay with you. Lord, keep them in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Now, Eva Meyer said, I declare and decree my blood clear and normal and metabolism. Okay, are you already claiming it by faith, Eva, or are you wanting us to pray for you? Because if you're claiming it by true faith, <coughs> excuse me, it has to be done. Praise God. If you want us to pray for you, we'll pray for you. And here's one from Ashley, prayer for her and her family, lost family members. And Lord, we agree together for uh, Ashley's request for her and her family. They're going to be all right. You're going to take care of them. You're going to meet their needs. So right now, we agree in asking, will you minister each one, meet each need, protect them, keep them safe? At all times, praise God. <coughs> and she's and for her lost family members, I agree with those who'll agree with me tonight. In asking, will you begin tonight, Lord, to do the work that they all need done? The brothers, the mother, the father, if they need him, and that you will, Lord, bring them to the place that they'll, uh, Lord, that they'll the ones that's lost in the family that you'll bring them to the place that they will surrender their life to you and be born again, Lord, and be born again, be saved, new creatures, fruit that remains. In Jesus' name, praise God. In Jesus' name. And Lord, for Christian, Kirsten and her brother's girlfriend and Jamie, we lift them all up to you. They're all with child. We ask in your mercy and in your compassion, will you touch each one? help each one without any kind of problems they'd be having if they do. Watch over them and help them through the pregnancies. Would you give them good, safe pregnancies? 
easy pregnancies and easy deliveries and healthy, unhealthy child. Lord, and we ask this in your mercy and compassion, will you do that, Father? In Jesus' name, amen. Here's one from Eva Kitchens. Pray for my family. Lord, we do pray for Eva's family tonight. And we ask in Jesus' name, will you meet their needs? And especially those who are lost, would you save them? Don't, die, don't let them die lost, Lord. Let her begin to see them come in and be saved in Jesus' name. Lord, for this request that Sam's got, praise God, for uh, the lost dog. Now, we don't know where the dog is. We have no idea. But you know, you see the dog this very moment. You know where it is. Would you do something in your great and mighty power to uh, to bring about uh, 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 a time when they'll find this dog safe? If the dog's still alive and gone already, would you would you see to it that they find the dog, Lord, the lost dog, with no harm to it? In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. And Lord, we pray for my daughter Tammy. Y'all agree with me, folks, for her wrist. Lord, we agree together in prayer for Tammy. I know that it's your will to heal. <coughs> and I know that you want to heal her. So we bring her to you and we ask, Father, will you touch Tammy's wrist? Make it make it whole and make it whole. Heal her. And make her whole. Lord, heal it up completely. Or she'll have any more problem with it. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Praise God. One more. Kathy wants prayer for her, for her horse. And uh, Kathy's already seen miracles with some of the animals she's got. And uh, God can heal this horse. He can heal this horse. People have gotten bad news about themselves and animals and everything else. And God's touched them and healed them many times. So, Father, right now, you know how important the horse is to her. If it's important to her, it's important to you. I agree with those who will agree with me tonight in asking, will you touch this horse, heal its hooves, heal its hooves, let your healing virtue, your healing power flow through those hooves, into those hooves, healing or ridding them of everything that's not of you and healing her, healing the horse in Jesus name, in Jesus name. Amen. Praise God, folks. God bless you. Thank you for praying and agreeing with me in prayer. I feel like God <coughs> done some things. I think, we're, I believe we're going to get some. Okay. She's claimed it by faith. Eva said, well, God bless you. Eva, if it's anytime you claim something by faith, it's done. Praise God. True faith. It's done. Now I do want to tell you this before I go off. And if anybody got any questions, I'll be glad to, my son said question Q and A, but I can't guarantee I don't know everything, begin to know everything about the Word of God, so I can't tell you for sure I can answer questions, and I might not answer to your liking. You might disagree with me, but if you've got to, oh, thank you, Judy. Thank you, Judy. Thank you, Judy. That is wonderful. That is wonderful. I do want to tell you this, that uh, I've had three or four people in the last two weeks, and this is very unusual. I've had three or four peop people in the last two weeks. Bless you, Jeanette. In the last two, in the last week or two weeks, I guess I think it's about the last week and a half. That is, asked me if I would do a Bible study on Revelation. Now I've already had several. My nose is itching, folks. That's the reason I scratch it. Uh, I've already had uh, several that's let me know they would like to have a Bible study on Revelation. Then I had a couple ask me about it. Then I had a lady call me yesterday at the station when I was on the air and said, I've, I've just wanted to know, Brother Warren, is it possible you could have a Bible study? And I said, well, I've been thinking about having one on Revelation. She said, oh, that's the one. She said, I was praying. I said, Lord, would you lead Brother Warren or have him do a Bible study on Revelation? And so uh, I'm thinking about doing that. Uh, my son, Josh, said, please do on live. There's, there's another one. God bless you, Joshua. But the time, it's going to have to be a time. And it might be a time that's not good for most people, but my best time right now is Sunday nights. 
Praise God. I am so sorry. Uh, if, I, if I can get another night, it's better than that. Because, see, I work at the station uh, Monday through Friday, except Thursday nights. And if the church starts back, then I have to be there <coughs> on Thursday nights and have to be there on Sunday mornings. As long as we're doing this, I'll try to do it. <coughs> Excuse me, folks. I tell you, I was not coughing all day long. And uh, I think it, it's either <coughs> from talking too much or uh, or it's uh, the enemy. Praise God. But anyway, uh, pray with me about that, if you would. The only nights I've got open is Saturday night and Sunday night. Praise God. Janice said, yes, good for me. She also says Sunday night at 530 or 6, Saturday at 6. <laughs> well, Joshua's got a, he goes, you're talking about church, you wanted a time when, when is your church services on Sundays, Joshua? Sunday nights at 6? Praise God. 6 p.m. Central Time or 7 p.m. on Sunday nights? I don't know what time they have service. And I don't want to interfere with anybody's service in any way, shape, or form. I don't want to take anybody away from their church service. Yeah, well, Judy's right. She said people can always see it later if they miss it live. And I, I hadn't thought about that. Nah, that's good, Judy. God bless you. She's a precious young lady. She's uh, She wouldn't call herself young anymore, but she's younger than I am. But uh, uh, So it's 6 o'clock Sunday evening, but you wouldn't be able to do, watch it on Sunday nights at 5.30, Joshua. Uh, oh, you haven't had any Sunday nights. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, that'd be a good time then. Sunday's better for me than Saturday, uh, but... I'll do whatever God wants, praise God. Uh, but uh, I was telling you about Judy. Uh, she also plays a, a guitar and sings. And she was part of our church in, in New Albany, Indiana, Church of Our Savior, New Albany Church of Our Savior. And uh, had a great, she had a good, great family. Her sisters were still living, precious folks. Her mom and dad's gone on, but... Uh, but her mom loved the Lord. Oh, my goodness. She was one of the backbone of the church. Praise God. So, uh, uh, Judy, God bless you. And, uh, Will, uh, you're right. I hadn't thought about it. If they go to church on Sunday, they can always come back and watch it later. Praise God. I hadn't thought about that. That's good. Okay. Just pray for me that God's will will be done about me doing it. And if I'm going to do it, uh, I told a lady, they called me at the station. I said, well, if I started, it will not be this Sunday night, but it will be probably the Sunday after that. Okay? So I'd be on about like I am tonight. Been on forever long. I'd make it do it for an hour. Okay. That's a good thing. That's good, Elizabeth, because she, that's confirmation helping me to get the right time here. She said, a while back, I want you to teach on Revelation. Uh, praise God. And Elizabeth says she can, it's better Sunday night for her. Praise God. That's good. Praise God. And, and Judy, God bless you. That's another confirmation that I'm supposed to do it. I really know in my heart I'm supposed to do it because God's given me too many confirmations. Uh, but it's really, uh, well, just pray for me. Uh, pray for me if you would. There's Jeanette saying yes. So, Please pray for me about it. Uh, God will help me with it. Uh, I love doing it. We we taught it taught it for a year. And Revelation is not a book that you go through. It's according to how you want to go through it. I told the people at the little church when they wanted to have a study on Revelation, I told them, I said, well, we can go through it fast, go through medium, or go through slow. And I said, well, I'm going to just pick the medium. But in that way, what you do is you, you hit a lot of things, but there's some things you don't hit because to do it really right, uh, it would take... Uh, Oh, that's good, Ashley. Sunday night would be good to her, she said. To them, I mean her family. Her and her husband love the Lord. Praise God. You got precious kids. I miss those kids. I, not that I don't miss all of everybody, but I, I miss those little kids. Little Ashley, I mean little uh, Kaylee, she is uh, her, their daughter. I miss giving her hugs. She'll run to me and just give me a big hug. Praise God. Uh yeah, you need to do it on live so I can save the videos. Okay, now, 
if I if I don't do it live, I was going to do it live like this. Uh, as if that's okay. Praise God. You thinking maybe I should do it? Or maybe I, if I do it without anybody, do it by myself when I'm here, then put it on there. I don't understand how it goes, but my son knows so much about all this stuff. Uh, him and my son Aaron, they both know a lot about this stuff, uh, the computers and everything. You know, neither one of them's had any training in it. I'll just brag on a little bit. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Judy. Uh, my son Joshua nor Aaron has had any uh, class training on computers. Yeah, you want me to do it live stream, right? Okay, but both of them built me a computer from scratch. Both of them. Praise God. And uh, I'm using one right now. I don't, I don't, I don't want to say the wrong thing. Samuel said he misses being in church. We agree with you, Joe said. God bless you, Joe. Agree with me in prayer. Uh, that it'll it'll be all it'll work out good. Praise God. I think it's gonna be Sunday night, and then I gotta figure out what time. Somebody said five thirty. Joshua did, and some uh, I don't know five thirty or six would be a good time. But um, I guess earlier we start, the more time we'd have. Praise God. Praise the Lord. But Sam, God bless you. He Sam uh, is a a man that uh, when him and his wife were coming to church when I first started there. They uh, sort of accepted a call for the ministry, and they both preached at the church. And then they got, and I shouldn't let that happen because uh, my. But I was glad I wanted to preach. But they got called to preach at a, and to take the position of a youth pastor at a big church in Bardstown. So praise God, God's good. Praise the Lord. Okay, just pray about it, folks, and ask, and ask the Lord to help me when putting it together. I love teaching on the Book of Revelation. It's one of my favorite books of the Bible, but, <coughs> excuse me, folks, <coughs> but Joshua said, I need to build you another because technology is greater now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, what I use is just Wi-Fi on my phone. I never get on my computer. I set it up in my living room and uh, anyway, and I have a printer that I can print stuff off and I can print lessons off and send them to people. I'd love to be able to do that, but uh Anyway, uh, God bless you. Anybody got anything else they want to say before we get off tonight? Praise God. I love you in the Lord. Thank you for staying. I can't believe it's been two hours. Uh, I can't believe that. I tell you, you would think this would go very slow, but it goes fast this time, does it? If you do them on YouTube, more people might be reached. Can you do live YouTube? I am not sure if you can do that. I don't know. Uh, Judy, I tell you, like I said, I I don't know about all this stuff. That's the truth. Whatever, whenever you choose is fine. My stepdad lives with me, and I have to feed him when he gets home, so I will join when I can. Praise God. When I can. I miss you, Sam. You're a precious, precious brother in the Lord. Praise God. Precious brother. God bless you. And, uh, Okay, Elizabeth, uh, if it's like somebody said, we love you too, Joe. I love you too, Joe. Uh, uh, praise God, Jeff. What I want to say is uh, you uh, uh, just, if you can't watch me, it's like Judy said, if you can't watch when it's live, you can watch it. You can watch it. Thanks for the message and prayers, Ashley said. God bless you. God bless you all. Love you, Tammy. God bless you and Joshua, she said. Folks, uh, Judy's problem with YouTube is that you need mods and chat. Needs a good setup for you. Oh, I see. I don't want anything that people can come on and say something they shouldn't say. I don't know how to stop them from doing it. Joshua knows how to do that. Uh, but that I don't want anybody come, getting in and being able to get in and say things they shouldn't say. I just can't stand that thought, and especially God's name being used in vain or anything. I just don't like that. Uh, okay. Well, that is something, Elizabeth. Well, I'm glad. Reminds me of, uh, reminds me of uh, Pet Robinson. 
on the 700 Club. He just turned 90, and he's working. I don't know how many hours a week he's working, but he's going. Your dad, I'm glad that God's kept him in good health. Praise God. That's great. That's great. Praise God. Jeff, God bless you. Josh will tell you best and safest way. Yeah, he will. Yeah. I'll probably end up doing it Facebook, but I want to do it in a way that that uh, is uh, is something that won't allow people to do and say things they should Praise God. Folks, God bless you. And if the Lord wills, I'll be back here Monday, I mean a Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. Sunday at 11 o'clock Eastern time. Now, most of you's got church. I know that. But if you can come back Sunday morning at uh, 11 o'clock Eastern time, I'll be coming to you from my home, Lord willing. Let's pray real quick. Lord, thank you for the people that dedicated and rededicated their lives to you tonight. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. I pray, God, and agree with those who will agree with me, there'll be fruit that remains. They won't get away from you. They won't backslide. They won't stop serving you. They'll get in there and just get on fire for you and can't get enough of the Word, can't get enough of reading and studying the Bible, can't get enough of praying. They just uh, really love you, <coughs> Lord. And so I, I pray you'll do that. We all agree in asking, will you keep them, Lord? Let no harm come to them. Let them be fruit that remains. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. I think you can fix that so that people can't respond on YouTube. Okay, I, I don't know, uh, Judy, what to do about that. I, I, I want everybody that's on here now to be able to get YouTube. If they can't, I, I don't want to lose the people that we've got here. But if they all can do that, uh, Josh will tell me the best way, like Elizabeth said. So God bless you, Judy, and God bless all of you. And until Monday, or Sunday morning at 11, may God bless and keep you.